Hello again. I am very, very pleased to have with me today Dr. Ryan McGarry, um, who recently not only finished up his emergency medicine residency, but finished up a full-length feature film called Code Black. Dr. McGarry, great to have you. Thank you. What's going on? Do you have any free time? Um, I, in fact, I, I do now. I didn't used to. Uh, I, was, I was captive to two amazing but very uh, consuming projects in my life for about four years. And uh, as you would expect, you need a lot of caffeine and other things to get through that. So you did your emergency medicine residency. That takes a toll on anybody, as I understand it. Let's jump to Code Black. What was the impetus for doing this film? What, what drove you to, to try to take on this Herculean task? Well, there's a, the, the first answer to that is that I had never seen something as fascinating as the LA County USC Emergency Department, and particularly this small space called Seabooth. I was a visiting medical student at the time, and I had rotated through other emergency departments, but I'd never seen anything like it. It was a very small space. There, there wasn't a lot of technology there. There was no doctors or nurses quarters. It was sort of this, this preserved space of what medicines maybe used to be before I think a lot of modern technology and regulation came into play. And the good side of this, the upside, was that teamwork really thrived there. So it was a spectacular um, effort of, of sort of saving people's lives in this very small, confined space. It almost looked like MASH medicine but here on U.S. domestic soil in a big U.S. You know, <laughs> city like Los Angeles. The other part of your question, you know, how does residency in, in a film like this interchange? Well, frankly, the themes were very similar. In a lot of ways, Code Black tells a story about growing up in American medicine. And of course, that's what you do in residency is you, you grow up. You come in with ideals and expectations, and over those four years, you're, you're, you leave with a, an entirely new perspective on the world of, of medicine and healthcare. I'd like you to focus in a little bit about C Booth, because in one sense, it's hallowed ground where many people have died there, many lives have been saved there, but also the practice of emergency medicine seemed to have been born there. Yeah, it, uh, it's controversial, but some would say this is the birthplace of the specialty. There's a few East Coast institutions that may have a different opinion about that, but out here in the West, um, we would argue that this is where, in many ways, the specialty was born. Um, started by an ob gyn physician, actually, who said, you know what, uh, psychiatrists, pedi pediatrics, dermatologists, these are people who are you know, moonlighting in this place but who have no idea what to do with an emergent resuscitative situation. So let's start to hone in on the idea of a specialty that is experts in that exact idea of that critical window of saving someone's life. Of course, we all know now that the specialty moves quite beyond that. That is our still bread and butter specialty. That's what we do. Um, very well, but, but of course, we've become the safety net. We're a specialty that uh, is effectively primary care for a lot of people for many reasons, for, for people who can't afford um, either the proper access to insurance to do that or can't afford to take the time off um, to get to a, a doctor in, during banking hours, let's say. I'd like you to help me understand the difference between looking at a clinical scenario through your human eye versus looking at it through the camera's eye. And does that give you a different sense of perspective, once removed or step back? Yes. So I, I, I personally think that physicians are, are, are we, we don't tell stories very well. Um, we, we're in a culture of individual thinking and very much a sort of scientific mode of presentation. And we use tools like PowerPoint and sort of lectures to, to, to tell a story. And sometimes that's, that's not good enough. Um, I think the idea of, of using the, the arts and bringing sort of your left side of your brain into our world um, primarily is disarming. That's the first thing that happens. When we use an, a, a mode of art to sort of look at a clinical problem or, or something even as complicated as healthcare in the United States, um, right off the bat, that's a very disarming mode of, of storytelling. And it really opens the door then to, to look at things from a, a quite a different angle, which is to say, all right, if you were sort of a fly on the wall in this situation, how, how would it look? Does it look a little different um, than when you're actually the, the clinical decision maker? I will say that as a filmmaker, Code Black was um, always uh, a goal of mine to make it very experiential. Um, I wanted you to feel the rumble in your chest when a critically ill patient is being rolled past you. I wanted you to hear the, the screams. I wanted you to, to get a sense of the musty air and the smells that we smell and all of these senses sort of really hitting you because I think it, it really does matter when we think about intensity and adrenaline, 
um, in those situations. And why do those things matter? Because when you're thinking like that, priority becomes very clear. And I think that in the healthcare debate and all that's been going on, uh, we've lost a lot of priority thinking. It's, 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 it's just too many things to think about. But when you have those forces of adrenaline and intensity, geez, the right thing to do is often very clear. We've been talking a lot about visual medicine, the role of things like bedside ultrasound that provides a visual assimilation of a clinical condition, a procedure of care. I'm curious if your film was almost a diagnostic modality for what's right or what's wrong with medicine. Um, I would say that we stop short of any sort of um, call to action. Um, we would like to say that the film is a diagnostic primer on the discussion. What we'd like to think is that, all right, if we can, ha if we can make you have this experience that many ER and primary care physicians know, this idea of being overwhelmed and having your waiting room packed with people, and then add to that the idea that what has modern healthcare done in many ways, it's actually brought on many barriers between doctor and patient. You add those two things together, the pressure of an of a overcrowded waiting room for people who can't get access to care, and then an expectations of a system that are focusing on, on uh, electronic records and charting, uh, legal protections, um, even burdensome technology and the cost of that and the patient-doctor experience, and you go, geez, the whole reason everybody's here, doctor and patient connection, a lot of insults going towards this. I think one of the things that we found in the film was that uh, particularly ultrasound and uh, products like it that allow the physician and, and patient to have that connection are, are, are now a rarity. This is something that's not, not only um, could, could help us in a diagnostic situation, but also sort of brings back this idea of doctor-patient connection, which is why all of us went into the business in the first place. Interesting, yeah. interesting. To me, the magic of the film is about seeing something that very few people get to see, really looking behind the curtain into a busy emergency room. And, and that was a big aha moment. Oh my goodness, almost. I'm interested in some of the compelling truths that you feel that you discovered while making the movie or were articulated in Code Black. Interesting. Um, I, I think that the, the first truth is, is w one of what we think we need is not often what we really need. Um, you know, Seabooth wasn't perfect. There was problems with privacy. Um, there were times where I think we wish we had um, a way to sort of protect patients from the, pa the cases that were right next to them. Um, but you know, um, a, lot of, a lot of the benefit of that room um, by far benefited the patients perhaps more than this idea of, of privacy. The fact that we didn't even have computers in that room, um, which is a stunning idea in 2014, the idea that we wouldn't even have, just, this was just five years ago, we wouldn't have a stack of computers at every desk um, for patient care is remarkable. And I, and I think it's because I think a lot of patients aren't that concerned about an overkill of privacy. I don't think they want their doctor logging in 20 times an hour just to access their medical record. What they really want is that physician's attention on them, right next to them. It should be a healing connection. And I think that's what we're all after. Um, so I think the, the, the primary truth that we discovered is that so much of the expectation on healthcare isn't really proven uh, to be really what patients and doctors actually want and, and what might actually benefit them. We know that there's many regulations, for example, that aren't evidence-based. And then we gotta go, well, wh why, are we, why are we worrying about them if they're not evidence-based? Because they're not, they're not really um, there to protect patients and they're certainly not making a doctor's job any easier. That's interesting. So one compelling quote from the film was one of the residents who spent the last 20 minutes um, doing paperwork, and two of those minutes were actually patient care. Is technology part of the solution or part of the problem in this environment? I think smart technology and evidence-based technology, and most importantly, technology that has patient-doctor connection in mind is, is the only solution for, I think, where we're, where we're headed. Um, the notion that, first of all, we can just CT scan everybody and, and you know, sort of push that route is, is well known to not only be irresponsible, but dangerous and, and, and not effective always. Um, I think really the, the, 
the true great frontiers of the discussion and the solutions of medicine from here on, whether it's an EMAR, whether it's a administration, whether it's a new federal regulation, or whether it's a, a product of technology, is gonna have to think about simplicity and patient-doctor connection, because if we're losing those things, we're, we, we, we're, we're, we're so off base, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. What have some of your peers said about the film? Um, you know, I, I, I will say this, I had a, a a wonderful cast, and I, I could have casted it probably 20 different times within my own residency. Um, I think that you had asked about the truth of the film, and I think that this generation of physicians, um, as the cast proves, it's a different era, and I think it's a very hopeful and inspiring one. Every one of them has left another industry, myself included, film school dropout, um, to, to come into medicine to do something more and to, 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 to impact society in a way that is measured at one patient at a time. Um, I think that's a change. I don't think that's what was happening 30 or 40 years ago. We, we know we're not going to get rich. We know that we're not going to have status, per se. That's, that's, that's in the uh, IT world now. We're not developing apps. We're not bankers. Um, we really want to be the front line of American healthcare. And um, part of the film is sort of rectifying our idealism for that feeling with the reality and protecting that. How do you protect those ideals? Excellent. Thank you for taking the time to chat with us today, and also thank you for Code Black. It's an important film, and it's an important message that we all need to see and learn. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate it.